my name is Chael. I am a 23 year old student in educational sciences from the Netherlands and welcome to a life of learning. On this channel I teach you all the things school didn't teach you about learning and living life that it probably should have and in today's video we will talk about how to prepare your brain for performance. So this video is a bit of a special video because I have a guest on the channel. The guest is Robin and she has a YouTube channel called The Science of Self-Care where she talks about science-based tips to help you improve your physical and mental health. So now I will give the floor to Robin to tell you a bit more about her channel and then we will go right into the tips. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I personally have a channel, The Science of Self-Care, which is all about helping you figure out how to take care of your body and mind so that you feel your best. It's something I'm really passionate about and I like to discuss these things with a science-based focus. So if that sounds interesting, you can check out our collaboration video on my channel. So whether you have to take a test or you are going to sit down for a long study session, it's very important that you're both mentally and physically prepared to perform in the best way that you can. So today we will be sharing five tips that will help you to both physically and mentally be in the best state that you can be to perform well. And now I will give the word to Robin to share her first tip. So one of the most important things you can do to prepare your mind and body for a good day of work or studying or a test is to fuel your body well, specifically focusing on the glycemic impact of your meals. That means eating balanced meals that are going to balance your blood sugar so that you don't have a spike of energy and a crash of energy that happens when we eat unbalanced or high sugar meals, for example. So an easy way to make a balanced meal is to really focus on incorporating protein into your meal. Protein is a macronutrient that helps to slow the emptying of food from our stomach, so that means we stay full for a long time, but it also means that our blood sugar remains balanced. Having a stable blood sugar throughout the day is so important for keeping your concentration, your energy, your mood all stable. And whether you have a long day of studies in the library, whether you have a big test, whether you have a long day of work ahead, protein is a great thing to eat at breakfast. If you are someone that does intermittent fasting and doesn't eat breakfast, just apply this rule to your first meal of the day. Protein is also very helpful in breaking a fast, again, because it doesn't spike your blood sugar. Other ways to avoid spiking your blood sugar are drinking plenty of water, also incorporating fats and fibers. There are many studies that show that moving after eating, even just for 10 or 15 minutes, going for a short walk, for example, Example, this can actually lower the glycemic impact of your meal and help balance your blood sugar. I do want to state that I'm not anti-carb. <laughs> I eat carbohydrates every single morning. I actually eat oatmeal every single morning. I include lots of protein in my oatmeal, but I'm not anti-carb. Um, I think carbohydrates are actually really important for performance. Some people feel best on low carbohydrate diets, but even if you do eat carbohydrates, it's important that you eat fiber-rich carbohydrates and still eat your carbohydrates with protein and fat and water and things that are gonna help you keep your blood sugar stable. So another thing that you can do to prepare your brain for performance is to activate your prior knowledge. And this does work a bit differently for tests than for study sessions. But the main idea is that if you have already activated your prior knowledge, it will be easier to tap into this prior knowledge when you actually need to perform. So for study sessions, this mainly takes the form of activating prior knowledge so that you have prior knowledge that you can tap into to connect the new knowledge that you are gaining to. Because the main mechanism through which we learn is by making connections. And if you have already activated this prior knowledge earlier, it will get easier to link new knowledge to this prior knowledge. And thus, this will help you to study more quickly and efficiently. And also in a testing situation, activating your knowledge before the actual test can be very helpful. Because if you have already activated this knowledge earlier in the day, it will be easier to tap into that knowledge 
when you need the knowledge to answer a test question. My next tip is, again, a cliche tip, but it's so important, it's exercise. There are actually many studies that show that exercise can improve our cognitive abilities, our learning, our memory. I actually recently read a study with sixth grade children in which they had different groups either perform a cognitive test before physical education or after physical education class, and the group that had to perform the mental task after physical education class performed much better. They had to memorize a list of words and recall them, but they didn't see that improvement after 24 hours. So this is very interesting. It's not as if they were actually better able to memorize it long term, but these children at the moment of performance did perform best after exercise. So this is something I always remember if I have a big exam, a big presentation, a big moment where I really have to perform, making sure that I move my body and get my blood flowing beforehand puts me in the right state to ace whatever I'm about to do. And then another thing that you can do to prepare your brain for performance is to cultivate the right mindset. Because very simplistically speaking, people can have two mindsets, a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. And people with a fixed mindset believe that their ability to do things is fixed. So there is no use in trying to learn anything really because it's already fixed. You cannot do anything about it. However, people with a growth mindset do believe that you can learn new things and get better at things through practice. And this latter belief is also way more strongly supported by the science of learning. And I hope that you can see why having the right mindset when you need to perform is super important. Because if you believe that nothing you are going to do is ever going to change the way that you are, change your ability to do something, then why even bother? Having the wrong mindset is detrimental to motivation and having no motivation is detrimental to having a valuable and efficient learning experience. And even if you have to take a test and learning might not be the first thing on your mind because what you want is to just succeed and get a good grade, having the right mindset when taking a test can actually help you to perform better on that test because having the right mindset and seeing failure not as the end of the world, but as just another learning opportunity takes the pressure off of the testing situation. Of course, it will not completely take away any stress you are feeling because, you know, tests are just kind of stressful situations when you're expected to at least perform sufficiently at them. However, if you are too stressed because you are too worried about the outcome of an exam, this will obviously work to your disadvantage. So actively considering your mindset before having a study session or before taking a test can be a way to make your study session more effective or your test more successful. The last and probably most important tip is getting enough deep sleep. So not just getting eight hours of sleep, but actually getting enough quality deep sleep. Because throughout the night, we go through many different phases of sleep. We have lighter phases of sleep where our brain waves are in theta brain waves, and then we have those really deep moments of deep sleep when our brain is in delta brain waves. And this is the type of sleep that is most healing and restorative for our body and our mind. It's also the type of sleep that happens more in the first half of sleep. Really those first four to five hours of sleep in the night are extra important to make sure that they are quality sleep. So how can we make sure that this is quality sleep? There are a number of things that can help us get into deep sleep. Firstly, having a winding down routine is really helpful. I know a lot of people talk about this, but just making sure that your surroundings are sleep inducing. That means turning the lights dim a few hours before bedtime. That means doing the same little rituals that can kind of prompt your brain to relax and calm down. For me, I have a whole skincare routine that makes me feel amazing and relaxed. These things can just get your body into a flow where once you start your evening ritual, your brain and body know it's time to relax and unwind. Another thing that's really helpful is getting enough exercise during the day. So I talked previously about how you can use exercise to perform better mentally. Well, 
doing exercise on a regular basis actually really improves the quality of your sleep. When you tire out your physical body, it's so much easier to get into that really deep sleep and get into it quickly early in the evening. Another thing that can affect quality of sleep are body temperature changes. So if you are lucky enough to have access to a sauna, going in the sauna before bed is such a powerful way to get your body into deep sleep quickly. If you, like myself, don't have access to a sauna, I like to take a really hot shower before bed, just get my whole body temperature up, and then get out. It's cold. That cooling process puts your body in a relaxing recovery mode Mode and then going straight to bed. It's so much easier for me to fall asleep on days when I take a hot shower. In terms of supplementation, melatonin and magnesium are also great options to help you fall asleep more quickly and get into a deep state of sleep. For magnesium, I personally love magnesium powder that you can drink. This adds a little bit of a ritualistic element to the evening, so I love to sip on a magnesium drink and to make that part of my evening routine. So these are some ways to help you get more deep sleep. Getting lots of deep sleep is going to make sure you are on fire the next day, you are acing all of your cognitive tasks, and also that you have energy to exercise and that your blood sugar remains stable because when you don't get enough sleep, it becomes not only harder to exercise, it also becomes harder to regulate your blood sugar. Your insulin sensitivity goes whack when you are sleep deprived. So if you have to take one thing away from all of this list, it's make sure that you are prioritizing getting enough quality sleep. So those were the tips that we had to share for today. We really hope that you liked this video and thought that it was helpful. If you did, then make sure to give this video a like so that others can find it as well. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this. And thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this. And if you liked this type of content and want to learn more about how to care for your body and mind, be sure to check out my channel and our collaboration video on there as well as my other content. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Robin for being on this channel and of course thank you the viewer for watching today and then all that there's left to do is to wish you lots of love and a life of learning.